Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper. And I'm here with a new podcast and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be discussing communications for preppers and everybody else that's interested. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As you know, I'm an amateur radio operator. I love the thrill of working QRP or low power, and have spent a lot of time trying to promote amateur radio with the hashtag 1000 new hams. I feel, however, that I've left some people behind. There are those out there who, for whatever reason, choose not to get their amateur radio license. And that's fine. However, they should still have communication capabilities. Well, today I'm going to hopefully rectify that situation by discussing license-free radio communications options. These license-free options for comms are the Citizens Band Radio, or CB, and the Family Radio Service, FRS. Each of these services have limitations as to power output, and this needs to be understood from the outset. But for local communications, they are truly a viable option. Let's start with CB. Those of us that are older will remember the CB craze of the 1970s and 80s, with Smokey and a snowman driving to Texarkana to get some adult beverages, or even Rubber Duck leading a thousand screaming trucks across the U.S., all while communicating over CB. As fun as those movies are, the reality of CB for SHTF comms or prepper comms is that CB still remains a viable option. Operating a CB station is really easy. All you need is a CB transmitter, a power supply, and the proper antenna. That's it. There are some rules that need to be adhered to, and as this is not an SHTF or the end of the world as we know it, we will be abiding by these rules set forth by the Federal Communications Commission. And the rules are as follows. Operating a Citizens Band Device you may operate a CB transmitter at any location where the FCC regulates radio communications subject to certain restrictions. A CB transmitter must be certified by the FCC. Transmitters that have been certified for use in the CB radio service may be found at the FCC website. None of the CB channels are assigned for exclusive use of any station, and you must cooperate in the selection and use of channels in order to make the most efficient use of them and to reduce the possibility of interference. If you use a CB station to transmit a message, you cannot talk to another station for more than five minutes continuously, and then you must wait one minute before starting another conversation. There are several additional things to consider when using a CB device, including you are not able to raise the power output of a CB transmitter. You cannot attach a linear or linear amplifier or any other type of power amplifier to your CB transmitter. There are no height restrictions for antennas mounted on vehicles or for handheld devices. For structures, the highest point of your antenna must be more no must not be more than 20 feet above the highest point of a building or tree on which it is mountain, mounted or 60 feet above the grounds. There are lower height limits if your antenna structure is located within 2 miles of an airport. You may use an on-air pseudonym or handle of your choosing. You must at all time and on all channels give priority to emergency communications. Here are some channels of note from the SHTF blog site. Channel 3 is the Prepper CB Network, and that's AM. Channel 4 is the American Preppers Network. Channel 9 is Universal CB Emergency or REACT channel. Channel 19 is the Main Trucker channel. Channel 36 is the Survivalist Network. And Channel 37 is Prepper 37 Upper Sideband. 
A new CB transmitter can be purchased anywhere from $40 to $460. The choice is yours, so choose wisely and let it depend on your funds. You can still get handheld CB units as well as mobile transmitters. A used CB can be had for cheaper, but you want to be sure they are in working order before you get them. The realistic range of a CB transmitter is 3 to 20 miles depending on the antenna type, terrain, and etc. Longer range communication does happen on occasion due to atmospheric ducting or shooting skip. One should not always count on this as it is at the whim of the atmospheric conditions. Now we're going to move on to the family radio service. These types of radios are better suited for use indoors and in urban settings as the frequencies have a better tendency to reflect and bounce off obstructions as they are in the UHF frequencies between 462 and 467 megahertz as opposed to VH VHF frequencies which get absorbed by buildings, trees, and other obstructions. These radios look very much like walkie-talkies, and they have no number pads on their face, just a speaker, a PTT button, and a fixed antenna, meaning you cannot add an aftermarket antenna to them. These are very ex inexpensive radios, and usually sold in pairs for about $20 on Amazon.com. FRS radios are not allowed to be used on any repeater system. They are strictly, strictly simplex operation, meaning they can only talk radio to radio. Now, here are the rules from the FCC website. Operating a family radio service unit. You may operate an FRS at any place the FCC regulates radio communications, subject to certain limitations. An FRS transmitter may not be modified and must be certified by the FCC. None of the channels are assigned for exclusive use to any user, and you must cooperate in the selection and use of channels in order to make the most effective use of them and to reduce the possibility of interference. The usual range of an FRS device on channels 8 to 14 is less than one half mile, but longer range communications can be achieved on channels 1 through 7 and 15 through 22, depending on conditions. You may not interconnect an FRS transmitter and radios with the telephone system. FRS is licensed by rule. This means that an individual license is not required to operate an FRS radio, provided you comply with the rules. You may operate an FRS radio regardless of your age and for personal or business use if you are not a representative of the foreign government. There are 22 channels in the FRS frequencies. Each channel has a bandwidth of 12.5 kHz, but the power of each channel may vary as indicated in a moment. Other channels are all channels are shared with GMRS, so you may hear communications from licensed GMRS stations. Okay, the channels and their restrictions are as follows. Channels 1 through 7 are restricted to 2 watts. Channels 8 to 14 are restricted to 0.5 watts. Channel 15 through 22 are restricted again to 2 watts. And there you have it. A basic rundown of both CB and FRS radio services. I hope this gives you a better understanding of these two services for your communication needs. And as always, I encourage you, dear listeners, to get your amateur radio license to further your communication needs. Thanks for listening, and I hope you've gained some knowledge from this episode. And as always, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper, saying stay safe and keep prepping. You have just listened to the K0MRD Radio Prepper Podcast with your host, K0MRD. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play to catch our next episode. Thanks for taking the time to listen. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off, 7-3.